flowers are differing species of animals who do just that. They pollinate our flowers and our crops around the world. So what that means is as they land on flowers and are drinking the sweet nectar from the flowers, the dust, the pollen gets all over their body and they move it from one flower to the next. In that process, pollination is what allows new flowers and new plants to grow. One in every three bites of food that we eat comes from pollinators. Now some of the most iconic ones are animals like bees and butterflies, but pollinators could be any any animal that moves pollen from one location to the next. It could be bass, it could be wasps, it could even be humans. Lemurs are actually the largest pollinator in the world, which is kind of fascinating. In the United States alone, pollination contributes to $57 billion into our economy each year. And worldwide, it's over $200 billion just from having these little animals moving around, doing what they're doing, and helping to pollinate our crops. So not only do they help us environmentally plant new plants, but they also help us economically as well. Monarch butterflies are what we call a flagship species, which means they are the face of pollinator conservation. Many pollinators people are a little bit afraid of. Bees, maybe they're afraid of being stung, or bats because they're a little bit afraid they might swoop down or carry diseases. But butterflies are an animal that most people generally love, and so monarch butterflies are the flagship species. They're the face of pollinator conservation. If we protect monarch butterflies, we are by proxy protecting lots of other pollinator species species, which helps us as humans protect our plants and our crops, our environment and our economy. Monarch butterfly populations have declined by close to 90% in the last few decades. And the reason that is, is due to habitat loss, both of nectaring plants as well as the milkweed, which is the only plant they can eat as caterpillars, herbicide and pesticide use, as well as climate change. These populations of insects are unfortunately not doing very well. One of the ways that we try and help them is we track them through their migration. Each fall, the super generation of monarch butterflies migrate from as far north as southern Canada all the way through the Midwest, including Kansas, down to the transvolcanic mountain range in central Mexico, where they spend the entire winter. So because scientists know they are taking this up to 3,000 mile migration through our state, we are waiting for them. And what we're trying to do is catch them, put a little tag on them and safely release them so we can study them. If we're able to study them, we know where to plant nectaring plants and milkweed, where to tell citizens not to spray herbicides and pesticides, and how we can educate others to help protect them. So the Topeka Zoo specifically helps monarch butterflies in a few different ways. One, you can see that we plant lots of differing pollinator beds, just like the one I am sitting in front of. So we provide habitat for pollinators right here on grounds. Now each September, when the monarchs migrate through Kansas, we also have citizen science tagging events, where members of the public as well as school groups can join us to catch, tag, and release as many monarchs as we can. The zoo provides all of the supplies, like this net, uh, and we teach kids and adults alike all about the plight of monarchs and how they can help them. It's a really exciting event because we get families involved in hands-on conservation work to help protect this species, and all of the data we collect goes to real scientists who use it to help protect monarch butterflies and get their populations back up.